Welcome back, ladies and gentle fish. It's your favorite Monday show, starting the week off just right. It's a boy Chris, the main host of FFT, and it's time for Fish Tank Review. Have we got something special cooked up for you today? How many hippos can I fit in my 65 gallon Mabuna tank? Not the right question you to ask what? by far, but here it is. This tank is definitely not 65 gallons. Are you sure about that? Have y'all heard of the house hippo? Man, that commercial got me effed up. For a long time, my parents thought I was stupid. They still do, but they did before too. <laughs> That hippo is living the life. Whoever had this beautiful idea of doing this? Actually, does this occur in nature? I feel like it does. Mabuna is from Africa, isn't it? Tanganyika sort of area? Hippos are from Africa, isn't it? This is an actual behavior that exists in the wild. I just keep forgetting that hippos are like pretty much part fish. They just exist in the water. If I was that big, you know what I mean? I would love to just exist in the swimming pool forever. I cannot imagine having to run a aquarium for a hippopotamus. Bro instantly overstocks like a 2,000 gallon tank. One bowel movement is all it takes to do a 100% water change. So how many hippos can I fit in my 65 gallon Mabuna tank? That just depends. Are they regular hippos or are they hungry, hungry hippos? So yeah, this guy has a very good point. The regular hippos are a different genus than the hungry, hungry hippos. And the hungry, hungry variety actually need a much bigger tank than 65 gallon. Rule is seven hippos for every tank. We're still going by the seven hippo per gallon. It's even more outdated than the one inch per gallon fish rule. You should not keep hippodons underwater. They actually will die. This guy just says 1.5. One hippo per inch of tank, so you do the math. Fitting one hippo in one inch of the tank? You're making a burger here, I believe. San Antonio Zoo. Makes sense. Definitely gonna need a bigger gravel back. I wanna see the stand that tank is on. Isn't it obvious? The only strong enough stand is the pizza table. Why don't the websites ever mention this great tank mate for my cichlids? <laughs> That's true. I've never even heard Aquarium Co-op mention this as an option. Green Aqua, a fluval. You guys, why do you guys even call yourselves fish keepers if you don't recommend hippopotamus or Mabuna tanks? You should be ashamed of yourselves. Quick Pause guys to talk about the sponsors of this video, you guys for smashing that like button and supporting on Patreon. You get perks in return like joining the FFT Discord server where there's more than 2,000 fish keepers worldwide chatting it up. You can also submit your fish tanks there for fish tank review. Thank you so much for your support. Caitlin K0122, too, too, too many letters and numbers, sent in their 20 gallon tank that's dirty. They've got African dwarf frogs in here and a betta that's five to seven years old, which is a funny thing to say. Like imagine if it's your child and you're like, I don't know, he's a about five to seven years old. It is such a nice tank. There's so much space. They're using everything. They got choya wood, they got seru stone, they got oko stone, they got mopani wood. Massive floaters up top. You don't even need live plants if you got that. Massive canopy of water lettuce up there. Yes, I can identify floaters by their roots. YB plus ratio mid diff. 4.38 out of five, keep it up. I gotta break the news to my RCs. Saltwater shrimp. 12 saltwater shrimp species for reef tanks for beginners and professionals. <laughs> this is beyond professional level. Like this is beyond special grade curse. This is harder than fighting 20 finger suck Yuna because well, why don't you try it? Try keeping crystal reds in a saltwater reef tank. You tell me how easy that is to keep them alive. Let me know, let me know. Fish boy will fight you. No thanks, I don't fight miners. Sent in their 20 gallon tank. It's a solo beta tank. They're thinking of putting in neon tetras and coolie loaches. Go right ahead. It's a 20 gallon. Pfft, throw them in there, dude. There's plenty of real estate for a beautiful better community tank. The woodscape, the half crescent is just, and the rockscape right in front, so neat. Plants in there, hopefully they spread out for you a little bit. Until then, a 4.4 out of five, but this is gonna look spectacular. This lasted all but five minutes before it was deleted. My new addition, I haven't had a beta since I was little. Now, I can't tell what the caption, was the post deleted in five minutes or was the beta deleted from reality within five minutes of putting it in this contraption? It could be either or, honestly, I don't know. I haven't had a beta since I was little. You know you still probably shouldn't have a beta. Ginger Boy sent in their nine month old Phoenix Rasbora tank with Ender's Life bearers and a mono shrimp. No wonder it's looking crisp, LG free. It's the wild look. That is a thick ass substrate. It's like a burger. We got sand and then we got porous rocks with some dirt or a fluval stratum, something like that. And then cap with sand again. It's been nine months and it shows. The pearl weed's going crazy. The Cecilia flora, the Elodia in the back. Super enjoyable scape, letting 
it go wild. The thick substrate means longevity. There's probably a lot of different critters in there other than the Rasboras, the Endlers, and the Amano. Keeping the ecosystem super healthy and very diverse. This is an incredibly healthy tank for your inhabitants. This is Wall's Dead Method done really right. 4.57 out of 5. Keep it up. Just a joke. Kudos to these beginners though. My tank after several years of experience in the hobby. Some random guy's first ever tank. This is low key how I feel. Some of these submissions are like, my first tank, I'm 12. I'm like, <sighs> what? And they do be kind of looking like that-esque. And over here, I'm like, do you want to see my first tank when I was 12? Do you want to see my tanks now? It ain't, it ain't matching up. I find the hardest part being sourcing the best looking hardscapes and the costs associated with it. If only money wasn't a factor. Pretty true. If money wasn't a factor, I could make good scapes like that. <laughs> totally not salty, totally the truth. True, LFS wants some stupid money for wood and rocks. It, it, isn't this a truth? I'm team, find your scape in nature. Lagging lag, send in their 20 gal. Wow, even your lag is beginning to lag. Cherry and checkered barb tank with an Amano shrimp. One rescue Daniel, upgrading to 30 gallons soon. What a good lad. It's beautiful and it looks pretty big already, like you don't even need to upgrade. However, I'll take an upgrade whenever, wherever possible. The hygrophilla polysperma stealing the show. It looks so healthy. It can shoot out of the water really high too. The tiger lilies bunching up. Now it's not the most intricate scape, but it's nicely decked out with a variety of plants, some hardscape, and the fattest cherry barbs I've ever seen. Wow. Double nitrous up top, just like my 20 gallon over there. 4.4 4 out of 5. Keep it up. What the F is this? New psycho tank. Oh shoot. Oh bro is flying in the water. That's that's a little freaky. What in the world is that? I don't think I've seen that before. Okay, so this is a caddisfly larvae, and apparently it can swim, and it will destroy your shrimp if you have a shrimp colony. It will destroy your shrimp. It's a ferocious predator. It doesn't look like that, I know, but it is. I thought caddisfly were those ones that, like, use debris to create, like, a shell, almost like a snail, but much cooler than a snail, and... They climb into the shell to protect themselves. Maybe this is a caddisfly out of the shell. It hasn't created a shell yet. If you see this though, get rid of it ASAP if you have shrimp. And if it can destroy your shrimp population, I'm sure it can go after your fry as well. So if you have guppies or live bearers, yeah, get rid of that caddisfly, bro. He's very particular. We got a puffer feeding. Pea puffer. Oh yeah, very particular. He's got time to pick his favorite piece. Which one's gonna pick? Oh, yes. Mmm. Very sophisticated gentleman. That is the piece to pick. Spectacularly marbled Wagyu from the Shizuoka prefecture. Every time I visit my mom, she has more and more fish. How to get rid of some. I mean, th this tank can use maybe a couple of caddisfly, not gonna lie. So I think it's safe to say your mom's not buying new fish. The fish she does have is just producing more and more fish. What I usually do is try to give it to any friends, friends of friends who might keep fish and want some free fish, or try to sell it, maybe ask your local fish store, or start a new tank. And if it gets really, really bad, is to just cut back on feeding. They will start to reproduce less if they can't get sufficient food. Made an impulsive buy and I regret it. So this person just rescued a dojo load from a Chinese supermarket because it looks too cute. The little beady eyes really got to him. But this person also only has a 10 gallon with a couple of Tetra. So it's going to be a temporary home and trying to rehome it. Looking for some cheap options to do so. Big storage tote. Plastic kids pool would probably work on a budget. Garbage can. <laughs> something is funny about looking down on your fish because they live in a garbage can. I agree. There's something there about a dojo load living in a garbage can. They can live anywhere. I bought some Java fern, but a lot of them don't have rhizomes. Will they still grow? Ooh. I don't know where you got that, but that is unacceptable, my brother. Indeed, it will be very hard for them to survive and grow. That rhizomal part is like the most important part for a java fern. If they don't have it, good luck. But if you're seeing this, and if anyone's seeing this with this kind of situation, first of all, take a picture and send it to complain. Maybe you get your money back. They will die, yes, but this is how java ferns and a lot of other ferns in the wild reproduce. They have sorry. Sorry, not sorry. The dark spots that develop on the underside of the leaf. In aquatic ferns like the java fern, these sorry actually just propagate into new small baby java ferns that grow into adult java ferns with rhizomes. It's quite amazing. Last night I posted these pictures of my new 5.5 gallon tank on our betta fish and I got 12 downloads so I got embarrassed and deleted the post. Filtered, heated, all real plants, cycling for a month. There's hiding spots, although there are small little holes. I would not want those holes. Betta fish love wedging themselves
themselves and getting themselves into trouble, so I understand if the critique was that. Other than that, what, do, what are they complaining about? 5.5 is pretty good size for a beta fish. Maybe they were talking about the white substrate, how it might reflect the very shiny light so the fish doesn't feel a sense of safety and is more stressed because it's too bright in there. Shiny ornaments as well because it's white, again it reflects light. But a lot of this is just nitpicking, you know. The beta fish can do just fine under these conditions. It does not deserve 12 downloads. Keep it up, dude. And just enjoy the hobby. You're doing fine. Someone brought us a goldfish with literally no air in the bag. I think maybe this person thinks air is bad for the fish. Just like how, you know, if you're storing some kind of food, you want the air out of it before putting it in the fridge. It does look like they really had to squeeze out and make sure all the air is gone because that is very no air. Like almost vacuum sealed. Good effort. Just very wrong. I'm going to need a bigger tank. Yeah, there's girl math, boy math, and then fish keeper math, where you base your tank size on what kind of wood you find in the wild. This is 100% true. Ask any fish keeper, they'll tell you. Yeah, I got this tank because, you know, no other tank could fit this piece of wood that I like. Artists, we're all artists. Three gallon long tank. This is a close up of the three gallon, the famous three gallon on Reddit. They made it for their mom. An amazing dimension that I just can't get over. Like, where do I get this? They don't sell this, do they? How do you even ship that? That would be a crazy thing to ship. It's scaped so well. The dimension, the space is utilized so well. There's like guppies in there and that's pretty much it. Very healthy scape. Just artists. Uh, from this to this. DSO-1 supports ease of bloat. <laughs> it's a prebiotic, probiotic formula. Wow, I can't believe I become freshwater from a saltwater fish. Me wondering if the workout program works. And this is that workout program's pictures for proof if it works. Thank you guys for tuning in and welcome to the end of the video. End of the video club. Before I let you guys go, here's this week's Godwa. Since somehow we ended on the topic of exercising, what is your favorite exercise to do? Could even be like hiking, recreational sports, or some kind of lift. Let me know in the comments below. I'll see you guys there. If you enjoyed this episode please smash that like button there'll be more videos to come and don't forget to get your fish wet the fish that you can wish for live fam says i finna one i finna gone three days without fur i'm an addict like fanatic i'm a baddest no tabs only dirt my cory gang so loyal black tetra go skirt we came to play came to silence gang violence no cap that could be fat she wanna clap 81 fahrenheit my boys get that whap put it on my tap three to one ratio breeders on the map